Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, I'll be doing the preparation and removing the components that will be necessary to remove the transfer case and transmission from the 1943 Willis MB. And I'll be removing the drive shafts, some of the clutch components, as well as the throwout bearing and the parts that are inside that operate the actual clutch assembly. On our transmission input shaft, we've got a throwout bearing and a throwout bearing carrier and a clutch release fork. To remove this, I'll simply push on the clutch release fork, get this ball from the cable out of the way, see I've taken the pressure off of it. We can remove that. I'll remove the clutch carrier spring with a pair of needle nose pliers. After the spring is removed, I can simply slide off the clutch release carrier and throw out bearing. And then I'll remove the spring from the front cap of the transmission. Using a pair of pliers, and being careful not to damage the surface on this, remove the clutch lever fulcrum ball. The bell housing is held to the transmission with four bolts on the top and the bottom of either side. Remove the bolts and the bell housing will come right off the front of the transmission. I'm removing the bottom bolt on the passenger side first for a reason because when I remove the last bolt I'll be able to keep my hand on the bell housing as it removes from the transmission. So I've got the last bolt almost out and I'll hold on to this bell housing with the other hand as I remove this last bolt. Simply slide off the bell housing. Now that I've got the bell housing removed, I want to point something out to you here. You'll notice there's no gasket in the material there. And we'll look at the front of the T90 transmission. And you'll notice there's two leak prone areas. One would be the main shaft here and this area here. You see the, the fluid is leaking right out of those and it has been for a long time. A great topic of conversation in the past for the T90s and they're prevalent on the CJ2As and up would be this gasket. There was a gasket that went between the T90 and the bell housing and it covers up those areas. So it would be installed like this behind the front cap. I won't be using the T90 in this restoration as fine as a transmission as it is. We'll be going back to a new old stock T84 in this video, I figured I would just point that gasket situation out to you. It's an important one. Before I remove the transmission and transfer case, I'll be draining the fluids. So I simply remove the flame plugs from both. There's our transfer case. And we'll let all the fluid drain out. To remove the clutch cable and the yoke, we've got a little clevis pin here that's got a cotter key or a cotter pin on the back side here. Simply take a pair of needle nose pliers, remove the cotter pin, and then the clevis pin will slide out from the yoke and the control arm. We can remove the clutch cable. To remove the clutch control rod, we also have a cotter pin or cotter key here on the back side. Remove that from the bottom. That one's kind of rotten. That was pretty easy to come out, so that's a good thing. Moving the control tube, you can remove the control rod from the lower ear. The clutch control frame bracket is bolted to the side of the frame with two nuts. Let's go ahead and remove those. you 
you'll see a lock washer there. Once I've got both nuts and lock washers removed, push the control tube forward and remove the bracket. With the bracket removed, we can slide off the control tube from the transmission. And then the bracket and the ball stud is removed from the control tube. And you'll note here the ball stud that's attached to the actual transfer case. I've supported the rear of the transfer case with a jack and a block of wood just to keep the transmission and transfer case level as I remove the drive shafts. In order to remove the transfer case and transmission, the rear and front drive shafts will have to be removed. Here you've got a view of the front. Start by removing the U-bolts that are connected to the yoke in the rear drive shaft. They're just simple half inch nuts on the back side. I like to loosen the nuts to the fact where they're almost off and they've got a little bit of thread left on there. It'll make it easier for me to pop this out. I'll just push like that. Because of the angle of the drive shaft, I can remove the backside U-bolt by hand. And then on the front one, because it won't come out by itself here, it binds up on the back of the drive shaft. I can grab a hold of the cup so they don't fall out and all the needle bearings go everywhere. And I can compress the drive shaft. And lower the unit. And then remove the second U-bolt. For the time being, so the cups on the U-joints don't come off, I'll use some electrical tape and just tape them up. I'll be replacing these universal joints with new, but I just don't want these going all over the place as I remove this drive shaft. The front side of the drive shaft is connected to the external e-brake drum with some studs and these nuts. There's four nuts on the outside of the yoke, and I'll remove these nuts so I can remove the drive shaft. There's the nut in the lock washer. Once I have all the fasteners removed from the e-brake drum, I can simply grab a hold of the drive shaft and pull it away from the studs. And then our drive shaft is removed. I'll remove the front drive shaft the same way as I did the rear by removing the U-bolts. With the U-bolts removed, I can compress the drive shaft. Once again, I don't want to lose the cups on those universal joints, so I'll tape them up. I can lower the front end down. On the yoke on the transfer case, I've got the U-bolts again, so I can remove those and remove the rest of the drive shaft. After I remove the U-bolts, I can simply pull the drive shaft away from the yoke. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, I'll be removing the transmission and transfer case, and that's going to be a neat one. I'm excited about that. If you'd like to follow along what we're doing, and you'd like to see what we've done in the past in the archive videos, you can subscribe to us at Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, keep it safe, and happy jeeping.